scientists have built the first ever thorium reactor. There was a time when no one thought that the creation of a thorium reactor would be possible. But now that construction on an experimental thorium reactor in China is complete, there is hope that a lot more people will have access to safe nuclear power. Keep watching this video to find out more. What you need to know. Uranium-233, which is created through nuclear fission from thorium, is the primary fuel for nuclear power plants that use thorium as their fuel source. There are several potential benefits of a thorium fuel cycle over a uranium fuel cycle. These include the vastly greater abundance of thorium on Earth, superior physical and nuclear fuel properties, and reduced nuclear waste production. The uranium-233-232 and plutonium-238 isotopes that are predominantly utilized in thorium reactors are difficult to weaponize, which is also a benefit of thorium fuel. The nuclear physicists Ralph W. Moyer and Edward Teller, after analyzing the viability of using thorium, proposed resuming thorium nuclear research after a three-decade hiatus and constructing a tiny prototype plant. Between 1999 and 2023, the number of thorium reactors worldwide will increase from zero to a few research reactors and then to commercial plans for manufacturing full-scale thorium-based reactors for use in national-scale power facilities. Those who support the use of thorium in nuclear power say it is essential to creating a new generation of safer, cleaner nuclear power. The Georgia Institute of Technology conducted an analysis of thorium-based electricity in 2011, and they concluded that it was either a 1,000-plus year solution or a quality, low-carbon bridge to truly sustainable energy sources, solving a huge portion of mankind's negative environmental impact. However, there are large upfront expenditures associated with developing thorium electricity. The proliferation fears will be exacerbated by the development of breeder reactors in general, including thorium reactors, which are breeders by definition. What are the foundational principles of fission? Nuclear power plants generate energy through fission, the splitting of fuel atoms. With this method, energy that can be transformed into electrical current is generated. There are no carbon emissions from the fission process, and nuclear power is more reliable than wind and solar, so it might be a powerful tool in the fight against climate change. The obstacles? There are currently more than 400 nuclear power plants operating across the world, with uranium being used as the primary fuel and water being used to cool and control the fission process. However, only approximately 1% of mined uranium is the fissionable variety. Therefore, a sophisticated and expensive procedure called enrichment is required to enhance the uranium-235 levels in the mined metal. Thorium is more prevalent than uranium, and its waste is less poisonous and harder to weaponize. Uranium fission results in a highly radioactive waste product that requires special handling and storage. This waste is a kind of plutonium that is suitable for use in nuclear bombs. Meanwhile, nuclear power plants can only be constructed near large bodies of water, such as lakes, rivers, and coasts, forcing the rest of the world to use an alternative, less pristine energy source. What's the substitute? Although water-cooled, uranium-fueled reactors are the most popular. They are not the only choice. Nuclear power plants can use the radioactive metal thorium as fuel. As a fission product, its waste is less poisonous and more difficult to weaponize than uranium's, and it's also more abundant. Nuclear reactor expert Sylvain David told the international news network France 24 that there is currently enough uranium to fuel all active reactors. However, if the number of reactors increases, we may reach a situation in which supply cannot keep up, and using thorium can significantly reduce the need for uranium. But keep in mind that thorium is more radioactive than uranium, making it riskier to operate with a thorium reactor. In addition, some reactor designs perform worse when using thorium than when using uranium. Instead of using water to cool and moderate the fission process within a reactor, molten salt, or salt heated to temperatures at which it becomes liquid, can be used instead. However, molten salt can corrode pipes, and experimental molten salt reactors have been plagued by technical difficulties. Molten salt reactors are more efficient and safer, and can be built in a wider variety of locations. The Chinese thorium reactor has had the same problems for decades, and no amount of studies have helped scientists fix them. But 
Now China is getting ready to conduct the first ever tests of a thorium-fueled molten salt reactor. China completed construction on its thorium reactor in the Gobi Desert, close to the city of Wuwei, in August 2022, and plans to start testing the device by the end of September 2023. China wants to construct a fully operational commercial version of the plant by 2030 if the prototype proves successful. This new thorium reactor could provide power for 100,000 houses, while the current one can only supply less than 1,000. China has no intention of stopping there. The plan calls for the construction of these reactors all throughout the country, with the hope that doing so will reduce pollution and make renewable energy sources more accessible to those who live in the country's arid regions and vast plains. The Advantages of Thorium You may be wondering what the advantages of thorium are. One, it's abundant. In the Earth's crust, thorium is roughly as prevalent as lead and gallium, and is three times as abundant as uranium. There is enough thorium in the United States alone to power the country at its current energy level for over a thousand years, according to the Thorium Energy Alliance. Evans Pritchard points out that the United States has buried a lot of waste from mining rare earth metals. In contrast to uranium, which is 99.3% fertile U-238 and 0.7% more valuable fissile U-235, nearly all thorium is the fertile TH-232. Two, Thorium is not bomb-worthy. The waste products of a thorium reactor are not easily converted into a usable nuclear weapon. Thorium is not fissile like uranium, hence tightly packed nuclei of thorium will not spontaneously disintegrate. Three, there would be less radioactive waste. Using thorium as a fuel in a liquid fluoride thorium reactor produces significantly less radioactive waste, up to two orders of magnitude less, as stated by Moore and Teller thereby negating the requirement for large-scale or long-term storage. As the Chinese experts put it, hazardous waste will be a thousand times less than with uranium. Unlike existing nuclear waste, which takes thousands of years to cool off, this waste's radioactivity lowers to safe levels after only a few hundred years. The production of minor actinides and undesirable uranium and plutonium isotopes, such as uranium-236 in conventional uranium-powered light water reactors, and plutonium-240 produce significant amounts of decay heat. They are fertile for thermal neutrons and are considered radiological hazards over thousands and even tens of thousands of years. There are some key differences between thorium and uranium-based fuel cycles, but overall, the synthesis of activation products and fission products is comparable. Four, less primary reactants are needed to initiate the reaction. Once operational, a breeding reactor requires no other fuel except thorium, says Moore and Teller. This is because a breeding reactor can produce all of its own fuel. The amount of fissile material created by a breeding reactor is more than the amount of fissile material consumed by the reactor. On the other side, fissile materials like uranium-235 or plutonium are necessary to keep the reaction going in non-breeding reactors. Five, it can generate nuclear power more effectively. The thorium fuel cycle could be used to generate nuclear power indefinitely while minimizing radioactive waste. Additionally, the incineration of weapons-grade plutonium or civilian plutonium could facilitate the switch to thorium. Six, adding anything extra to it is unnecessary. The cost of fuel enrichment is avoided when using all natural thorium as a fuel source. U-238, on the other hand, is equally useful as a fertile fuel in the uranium-plutonium cycle. Seven, thorium is very efficient. One ton of thorium may create as much energy as 200 tons of uranium, or 3.5 million tons of coal, according to Nobel winner Carlo Rubia of CERN, short for European Organization for Nuclear Research. Also, reactors using liquid thorium fluoride are not susceptible to meltdowns. In the case of a power outage or when the reactor's internal temperature rises over a certain threshold, a fusible plug at the reactor's base will melt, releasing the fuel into a secure underground tank. But that's not all, as there are also fewer risks and more productivity while mining thorium, as opposed to uranium. The amount of thorium in monazite is often higher than the percentage of uranium in uranium's ore. What this means is that thorium is a cleaner, cheaper, and more efficient energy option than its alternatives. Since the thorium mine is an open pit, it does not need any special ventilation like underground uranium mines do. 
where radon levels can rise to dangerous levels and cause health problems for workers. That being said, let's wait and see how scientists around the world will make the best use of thorium for the benefit of the human race. Thanks for watching.